start in India by saying Jai Jagat. So I'm going to say it, and I want to see if you can say it. Jai Jagat! Jai Jagat! Jai Jagat! Jai Jagat! Jai Jagat is a, means victory to the world. It sounds very militaristic, doesn't it? But it really means everybody's included. It's not just Jai Hind, you know, God bless India, or God bless Sweden, or God bless Switzerland, or God bless America, but it really means God bless all of us in the world. And uh, this was uh, something that was given by Vinaba Bhave, a Gandhian follower in the 1950s. He coined this as a way to say that we keep our feet rooted in our countries and our locality, but we keep the windows open for the flow of all the different forces of the world to be benefited by those forces. So, Jai Jagat. And Jai Jagat, before I speak a few minutes about that, let me just say a few things about myself so I can locate my white face and my Indian uh, locality for you. Um, I basically went to India in 1986, thinking I was going to be there for one year, and I've stayed 32 years. So it's been a, it's been a, a beautiful life, and my professional life has been there. Um, and I want to also say I started with the United Nations. So I went to India as a UN uh, employee. I was a kind of a consultant working on social forestry project. And um, what I realized after about uh, six or eight months in India is that the tree planting programs that we were supporting through the UN were actually going to rich landlords and not to the poor peasantry to whom the project was devoted and dedicated. And so soon after, uh, I left the UN. And I remember I wrote my family in Canada and said, I'm leaving the UN, and uh, by the way, I'm leaving my job, and I'm becoming a volunteer in India. And of course, they were naturally, as parents, uh, deeply disturbed. But I think, you know, this is, was probably one of the best decisions of my life, because it meant that you sort of take on something in the unknown, uh, because you have a deep passion for it. Yeah? So I stayed on in India. And I continue to set up an organization called South South Solidarity. So being a Canadian, not an American, I'd like to distinguish that. <laughs> um, I was wanting from my UN five years in the United Nations to really help uh, to see development from a South perspective, not from a perspective of New York or Geneva or even Stockholm but to see it from a perspective of different South communities helping each other. And so we started this and worked for about 10 years. And it was through this process that I got into social justice issues in India. And through the social justice issues, particularly with women and villagers and some of the local issues, I began to see that what I was really doing was peace work. So that's how I grew. But somewhere in this, I couldn't figure out how do people in poor areas, how, how do you keep them excited about changing their life? Because I knew with money, I could only keep them excited as long as the money was there. So I was trying to think, what is the motivation to keep people involved in the capacity building and in their own development. And I realized that maybe Gandhi has something to say about that. And when I went to Gandhi Peace Foundation in 1993 to buy some books and to get more information, I happened to meet Raja Gopal. And it was uh, through a long association with Raj Gopal and Ekta Parishad, I had the great privilege 
of not only working in an NGO, but working deep in the villages of India and learning how people and what people's aspirations are, not what my thought of their <laughs> aspiration is. And I have to tell you, as you're all related to BLLF in some manner, that uh, I thought I was going to go and change those wonderful women in the villages, but what happened is they changed me. <laughs> and so I never really de desired to go back to Canada again because of those changes. So I, I'm still in India, having a few times gone back and forth out of desperation for a little Canadian snow. <laughs> but um, mostly I've been in India. So why I wanted to tell you that story is because the work that I do sits with the deep commitment that I feel. And so the Jai Jagat, victory to everybody, when you live in a country like India and you're working with very poor people, you realize that at some level you also have to work with the middle class not to make them uh, allies so they oppress poor people less. So you're working always on two fronts. You're working on the front of helping people in their capacity building to make their own decisions and lead their life in a, uh, giving them the space to have their land and livelihood resources. But on the other hand, you're working with the middle class and elite communities to understand that they should be more sensitive <clears throat> to the to the survival of poorer people and, uh, and, and try in their own way to be helpful and not continue a system that is so oppressive. As India does have high degrees of poverty, as you know, like Pakistan, they're very similar. And I know it's also similar to some of the Afghan uh, problems as well. So, Back to Jai Jagat. I have a few minutes left. Um, basically, Jai Jagat came out of a concept. We had done a number of marches in India. Marches that helped to mobilize people to stand up for their rights. I'm sure you've heard about them. As Raj Gopal has been in uh, Leech Chopin before. But uh, what is very interesting is that after our last march, when 50,000 people marched for 10 days for a land reform agenda on the national highway in, in, in India to Agra. Agra is the famous place of the Taj Mahal. We marched there and the government rushed to make an agreement with those people because he the government of India really didn't want them to come to New Delhi, so many of them. So they rushed and we had a very good 10-point land agreement. And it was wonderful to see 50,000 people sit with a senior minister in the Indian government and sign an agreement that sealed a land reform agenda, something that is very unusual in a parliamentary system. So after that agreement, uh, and things went quite well uh, in the follow-up, we had some problems when a new government was elected. But in that process, many countries invited uh, some of us in Ekta Parishat, particularly Rajagopal, to their countries to talk about, how did you do this? I mean, this isn't, how did you mobilize so many people? to walk for so long? And how did you get the government to sign an agreement uh, in Agra? And uh, so we shared some of the experiences wherever I went. We, 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 I was there too in some places. We shared some of, the, uh, some of the ideas and they said, you know, we need to do something internationally. So the, the thought was that maybe this non-violent social movement that Ekta Parishad had built 
based on Gandhian lines, could be used somehow internationally. So we began to share uh, that experience and came up with an idea of marching from New Delhi, that is Gandhi's grave, where Gandhi <coughs> is buried in New Delhi, Rajgat, to Geneva. Imagine, 10,000 kilometers through 17 countries, some of them the most violent countries in the world, many of them Muslim countries, and through Eastern Europe where there has been a tremendous backlash against refugees and against the influx as, as it has in other parts of Europe. But we thought, why is this important? It was important because we thought we needed to move from violence to nonviolence. Because we needed to not go as refugees but as citizens. Because we felt we needed something different in terms of international governance. And so with this kind of commitment we began to plan a campaign uh, within Ecta Parishad in India and began to involve Ecta Europe who, as Maggie said, is a wonderful body of different organizations and people who have deep sense of alliance to the, to the mission of the uh, Ecta Parishad. And so we began to plan this. So in conclusion, we are thinking of having a massive action in Geneva in, uh, in uh, September, uh, for about two weeks at the end of September 2020, after this long march is completed, after other marches in other parts of the world will be completed, and to really tell some of the UN organizations, based on some uh, well-crafted recommendations and thoughtful uh, recommendations, how we need to be more bottom-up and not top-down. How we are not just recipients of development, but we are the architects of development. How poor people need to be included. Black and white are the same. Muslims and Christians need to be there at the table, not in polarized forms of politics. And we need a different kind of system in terms of a more redistributive economy. So these are some of the things that we're proposing to speak about in the Jai Jagat. And we hope that you, the people here um, in Litschopen uh, will join us in this effort because what we've seen here, and I would just like to conclude with this, what we have seen here in the last three days amazes us. A municipality like yours with so much engagement in the Iqbal Day, in the international issues, both the issues of peace and justice, and we would like so many other communities like you to be able to stand up and do what is right, which is to say we are all one, we are all a common humanity. So I just want to express to Brit Mary, to Bing, uh, to Kirsten, and to all the team here, Cecilia, uh, and of course Lena, uh, the wonderful time we've had, and we really welcome seeing you again, and uh, wish you a good day. Thank you.